Okay, in this video, we're going to look at um, some simple frequency distributions, some simple summary stats, and how to do some tricks with histograms. All right, so to start off, let's go ahead and load our data, right? So you just double click on your data source, which brings into your main menu, but remember that hasn't actually loaded it. You have to run it. And then now this tells you that it put the data in the work.import, right? There were 24 observations. There was only one variable. And it gives you all sorts of you know information that you don't really care about. If you click on output data, you can kind of see what you have. So my variable is called fluoride. And if you scroll through, you can see all 25 values. So uh, now I know that um, my data is in SAS and I can run with it. So let's say the first thing we need to calculate are some typical summary stats, right? So we can go to our task and utilities and under tasks and under data, it has all sorts of stuff where you can mess around with your data. That's not what we're doing. Go down under statistics, right? And you can see summary statistics, double click that. That brings up your summary statistics. Now it defaults to kind of the last um, set of data you used. In case you had saved yours under a different name, you can click here and then you can go and find wherever you saved your work. And then make sure that you're using the correct set of data because sometimes you can have multiple sets loaded. Now you need to tell it what variable to run stats on. So you choose fluoride because it's the only variable you have here. So obviously we're not going to have a classification variable. Now you can see it's starting to build uh, code over here. And you can manipulate this code by yourself if you know how to do so by clicking edit. But you can also go to options and see that these are going to be the basic statistics it gives you. Right? You can add things if you need them. You can take things away. Right? All sorts of stuff. Now we want the range. So we could just do minimum and maximum and um, subtract one from the other. or we could get rid of all the things we don't need because we want to try and stay real clean with our output. And under additional statistics, you can see range, right? Gives us everything we need. So all we need is the range. And if we go down to our plots, we can even do a, a histogram to see what it looks like, just to see what, a, what SAS does for its standard histogram. If we run that, here's our range, 0.33. And here's the histogram it gives us. Now you're thinking, well, what if I want more than five classes, right? Maybe I want seven classes or 10 classes. And what if I want mine to my bins, what we call these classes are oftentimes, oftentimes called bins. What if I want my bin to start at a particular thing? Well, that's really easy. All you do is augment a... Um, the code, right? So what I like to do is I like to let SAS do the heavy lifting for me. If I want to make a special histogram, the first thing I'm going to do is have SAS make me a histogram, right? So again, I make sure it's the data I want. I put in the analysis variable I want and the scale. I'm going to do count because I want a frequency histogram and not a relative frequency. We can change that later. You'll notice that the scale just changes to count, right? And if I come up here and do proportion, right? That's going to be a relative, right? And percent is pretty much the same thing. It's a relative, right? The scale just goes away. So let's put it on count. Now under uh, appearance, you can specify a number of bins and you can do all sorts of things. So maybe you want the bins to be seven and you see it added this code right here and you can play around with all this stuff and, and see what you can do. But if you run it, you see that you get this, right? And if you go back to your code, so this is the code that gives me kind of that standard, um, you know, histogram that they gave us and it's not really what I want because I want something that the bins start at a specific place and have a specific width. So I can see that these lines down here are basically where they're messing with the histogram, right? So 
This just tells me to take a histogram and use fluoride as um, the variable. Okay. Now I'm going to click edit so I can edit this and you can see that it already renames it program one because we're no longer doing a histogram, we're doing something new. I'm going to put this on another line because I want to kind of help myself realize, you know, what I'm doing. Okay. Well, I don't want um, the scale. I don't want to mess with the scale. I want to mess with the bins. So let's just start typing in bin and look at that bin start bin width. So double click bin start. And that says, you know, where do you want your bin to start? So how about 0 0.705? And then we already saw bin width is also there. So bin width, double click on that. And I want my bin width to be 0 0.05. And then I've got scale equals. And over here, it tells you your different choices, right? I'm going to leave it at count. And I'm going to get rid of my number of bins because I don't need to do that. Because now that I told it, where to start and how wide to make it, it's just going to create the bins based on that rule. So now let's run it and see what we get. Well, look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven bins. And you can see that the first one starts at 0 0.705. And the uh, it tells you that the data value in there is 0 0.71, a count of one. If you hover over here, right, fluoride of 0.91 count of 4, 0.96, and so on and so forth, right? So that's how you can mess with um, how wide your bins are with bin width, where your bins start with bin start. You can also, I think there's a, a bin end or a bin finish or something, and it can kind of work backwards from that way as well. Okay, so we can now manipulate our histograms. Let's say we want to answer questions about um, our relative frequencies and things like that. So if we went back to code and what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy all of this. I'm just going to copy the whole thing. And I'm going to put another version of it here. But instead of doing count, let's do proportion. So we're going to get a histogram for count, and we're going to get a, a histogram for basically relative frequency, right? Frequency, relative frequency, that's what they're called in this. And look what happens. So here's my count. It says count, 0 up to 6. And then I scroll down. Here's my proportion, 0 up to 25%. And what do you notice about the shape of these two? They're identical. Well, of course they're identical, because a count and a frequency are going to be the same thing, right? The bigger the frequency, the bigger the count, the bigger the count, the bigger the frequency. So the, the height of your bars are going to remain the same. Okay, so that's that. Now, we, uh, as far as how do we determine what the actual frequencies are, we see that when we hover over this, it tells the proportion of 0.2. But that's not really helpful because we don't know, um, you know, what the values were, you know, like if the cutoff was, what's the percentage of things that are above 0.93? Well, like, well, this says 0.96, this says 0.91. How do I know where, how, how many of here are actually bigger than 0.93, right? I just know that they're bigger than 0.91. So to do that, the easiest thing is to do simple one-way frequencies. So come over here. Double click on one way frequencies. Choose your variable of fluoride. Run that. And you get this beautiful little table of frequencies. So here are your 25 data values listed from smallest to biggest. It always does that by default, which is great. Here's the frequencies, right? So you can see that these all showed up once, these showed up twice, right? So on and so forth. Now this is called percent, but that's just SAS speak for relative frequency because 4% is the relative frequency of this, right? One out of 25 is 4%. Two out of 25 is 8%. Then we've got cumulative frequency, and then we've got cumulative percent, which is 
relative cumulative frequency or cumulative relative frequency, whatever you want to call it, right? So as, as you start adding up these percentages, that's what these numbers go. So let's say they asked a the question, um, you know, what percentages of your data is bigger than 0.91? Well, 0.91 would land right here. So all of these, right, these are all bigger than 0.91. So what percentage does that make up? Well, 72% was less than, so if we subtract that from 100, that means 28% was greater than 0.91. So this is a nice little feature for figuring out relative frequencies so you can answer uh, probability questions. And that's it for this video.